Look out! The captain's away! The Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Makers of Effluix. The new way to clean up dairy effluent and wastewater while increasing the fertiliser value of your irrigation in one easy step. Visit microbio.co.nz for more. Strong, powerful cry! Welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen, episode two. My name is Martin Devlin. I'm from the platform. A former Warriors coach, 25 caps for the Kiwis and played as pro league in both hemispheres. Newcastle Knights here in the NRL. It's Tony Kim. Welcome back, Tony. Thanks a lot, Marty. And it's uh, two weeks into the NRL season and it's like hopping into a new F1 car with the same rules, but the different uh, driver going around trying to get all the kinks out of the car in the, in the first, uh, what do you call those, warm-up laps. And this week we saw Brisbane and Penrith jump back on uh, the, the pole position and lead the way. No, it's two play Thursday night too. What a hell of a game to look forward to, which is what I love about the league more than anything. God, they get it right. Who, who doesn't want to watch that game already after round two? Okay, winners. Broncos over the Rabbits. Sharks over the Doggies. Panthers over the Eels. Raiders over the Tigers. Cowboys over Knights. Golden point that was. Storm against the Wars late. Eagles were impressive over the Roosters. Dolphins versus Dragons. The Weekend Roundup. Weekend Roundup to start with, people. Then we'll go into Fan Forum. We've got the Up the Wars segment. He's a legend. We're drawn by Richie... Ad- Joined by Richie Agar, the Warriors' assistant coach. Really looking forward to that. We go head-to-head with myself and Tony. We'll debate six separate topics, 30 seconds on each. The Effluix Cleanup Award. Wrap it all up with TK's Top 5. If you want to join the program, 5050 on the text or the lines are open, 0800 Who impressed you the most after those results this round? Well, look, I've got to say... Um, the team that really looks like they've got some stability about the way that they're playing. They've got big forwards in the middle of the park, um, Pasika, Aloi, uh, and of course the back, big bloke in Alokawatu out there on the, I think it was the right edge he was running around this weekend. He can play on both edges, but Luke Brooks in the number six jersey is a Manly Sea Eagles. I just thought up against the Sydney City side, uh, Joseph Manu was kept quiet. Um, you know, you, you didn't see that same uh, game from Walker and, and Kerry in the halves. And, of course, they just got torn to bits every time Daly, Trebojevic got, got their hands on the football. But the thing for me, Marty, the way that Manly were playing, they it looked like Daly Cherry Evans had time on his hands, which he hasn't had over the last few years. So he was picking and timing everything to perfection, even when he kicked that field goal to take it out just by an extra point. Um you sort of knew that they had the game in the bag up against the Sydney uh, City Rooster side who were hot in week one. They are legit. There's no question about that because of those two results. I mean, if anyone that beats, uh, you know, the, follows up with a win against South and then the Roosters, that's legit. I think Melbourne as well, you've got to add to that, don't they? Because they've beaten Penrith and they've overcome a really determined, spirited Warriors side. Well, you talk about Penrith and the Broncos. They jump back on the on the bad wing this week with a couple of wins. Cr- uh, Cronulla, two, at, two from two, they, they're going okay. And then you look at the Melbourne side who still have to get Munster back. In that six jersey, it, it's a you know it's got to be worth ten points having uh, Cameron Munster back on the side, but also big Nelson Asifa Solomona, who um, by all accounts is on the outer at Melbourne. They're talking about he's not fit enough. Craig Bellamy's come out and said he's got a lot of work to do to get back into the side. Do we see the Warriors going because they're looking for a replacement for um, uh, big uh, Asifa? Well, I'm going to say Asifa Solomona, but Aiden Fanua Blake. Um, so do you see that? change as well but Melbourne have got so much stool to give and the and the you know to get Munster back I think they're a totally different side Pippin Elson was very good on the weekend out of the teams that have won two and oh we've already discussed Storm and we've already discussed Manly Sharks two and oh Cowboys two and oh Raiders two and oh let's look at that Sharks side because I had, like, I didn't actually think that the doggies were that bad but they've again ground out a couple of wins what has impressed you about them well, I think that they have ground out a couple of wins. You know, you look at the way that they've played across the board. I think Will Kennedy out the back has been, you know, a revelation in the first two rounds. He's he's probably why they've kept in the game. He's made a couple of long uh, breaks from his own try line on some kick returns and got the likes of Nico Hines behind him, which has allowed Nico that, that free-flowing running game. Um, but for me, with the, with the Cronulla Sharks, it's whether or not they can maintain that momentum you know, yeah, the Canterbury Bulldogs, they're disappointing. If you look at their side, I think Stephen Crichton's the best centre in the competition. He's got 
arguably the best back row in the competition in, in Viliami uh, Kikau on, on that left edge, but it looks like he doesn't want to be there, you know, and this is where uh, uh, Serraldo needs to find the, the magic in, in Kikau. I think if you can get Kikau going really good, better than you've got on the inside, Burton and, and um, Crichton on the outside, I actually think they're a threat, but the effort's there, but the effort isn't there from the marquee player, which is Crichton. I think he's there just to pick up a check. Tony Kim is with us. All right, because I want to go down to those teams who are 0-2. The Warriors are one, and you know, can you write any of these teams off? I'll ask that question in a second, but let's just go back to the top of the table where the Raiders and the Cowboys sit. This Raiders side is dangerous. They've won two in a row. That's who the Warriors get on Friday. It's a home game. That's an away game. And the Cowboys, who last year, you know, they... They, 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 they were the surprise package. They kind of dropped off the cliff last year. They bounced back as well. Have you seen enough from those two sides, the, the Cowboys and the Raiders, that you can say, yeah, they are top eight sides this year? Because remember every year, Tone, 2.8 drop down, 2.8 go up. Well, no, no one sort of really cares about the first half a dozen games of the of the season because the, the competition, if you look at it, it's four at the top, zero at the bottom, and it's so easy to pull those two games back. All right, but what you are looking at is you're looking at whether or not they have the longevity in their in their styles of wins, whether or not they can carry that over out of such a long season. Because it is a long season, Marty. You get injuries. We've already found that out with um, losing our main man at number nine on the on the first weekend. You got Lusick coming in to replace him. There's a definite uh, shift in and around the dummy half and that movement. But the same goes for a lot of the. Uh, teams in these early rounds, if they can keep people on the pitch, most coaches know that they're going to be there at the back end of the year. Canberra, a surprise packet. Ricky Stewart, he's you know he's playing all the Ricky Stewart games to get his team motivated. It's going to be a hell of a game down there on on Friday night against Christchurch and the Cowboys. They were lucky. Like there's no other way to put it. They should never have won that game, and they got back into a position to win it. Uh, at long periods of time, they couldn't throw the knockout punch to get the Cowboys. But that's what Todd Payton has done with that side. He's built he's built them in and around a little bit of resilience, a little bit of fitness, and like we saw with Melbourne and the Warriors, it's an 80-minute game. You've got to yeah, be there in the, yeah. in the, what was it, six seconds on the clock. Kalen Ponga, just uh, clumsy as, uh, same as Artie, yes, uh, it was a mistake by him, you know, cost the Warriors with three minutes to go when he lost that ball as well. We'll talk much more about the Warriors in a few minutes. If you'd like to text any questions at all, 5050 by all means. Bottom of the table, Knights are 0-2, Rabbits are 0-2, Dogs are 0-2, and the Warriors are 0-2. Can anyone be cut adrift yet? Or are you just thinking, no, it's two games in, it's too early? It is, it's still too early. You know, you got the Tigers up there that look pretty average too on when Benji's first um, run around as an NRL coach in, in real time. Uh, look, I, I still think it's too early. The, the competition, generally you give the first five or six weeks just to have a look and see who's adjusting to the rules well. It'd be really interesting to talk to Richie Agar about those, you know, the kick chase rule, the lifting the leg and the ruck, how, how it's actually affecting the ruck. Because one of the things we're talking about before is that you've really noticed the speed around that ruck. You saw when Jerome Hughes made that break. We'll talk about much more on the Warriors people in a second, but the speed around Jerome Hughes making that break and our guys with their backs to him thinking they had time to reset and they didn't. Yeah, and there's a, I, I think there's a, a key element of the rule change that they made this year about lifting the leg and the ruck. So lifting a leg and, and winning the tackle has always been a big thing over the last three or four years. It allows another couple of blokes to get around, wrap yourself a body around them and really slow down these milliseconds uh, within your defensive line so they can get back and face the opposition attack. Now, without lifting the leg, you can put both feet on the ground and, and a bloke like Pepper, Pepper now is in 10 metres out of, a, out of his line. He's got a little bit of strength and he pops the ball over the top and it falls into Jerome Hughes's hands who can beat Aidan Fanua Blake off the mark ten, nine times out of 10 yeah. and just takes off through the ruck. And that's the difference in the game at the moment. If you look at Fido last night and just the speed and the, the, the length of the tries that people are scoring on the back of some some really good play, I think it's a big difference to the competition this year. So look for look for teams with speed, look for teams with really good dummy halves. Is there an option to move your dummy half play around? And I think you'll see this later on in the year where coaches go, actually, I'm going to move someone else in around dummy half to, to, to exploit what's been uh, created. But at the moment, I think coaches are still looking at the competition going, well, we're still stuck in 2023. And as time goes on, we saw it with the, these passes on the weekend, four tries for the outside pass. Yeah, amazing. And a little short inside short, to the short inside back. pass. And no one reading it. The same thing will happen with the hookers. They'll work it out real quick. And, you know, I don't see it being too long. And it'd be interesting to talk to Richie about this, whether or not they get one of their faster outside backs into dummy half on that, on that shift of momentum. You know, if you're going backwards, 
Why not put a Roger Look, Tweed You said four tries house. were scored that same way. The, the Melbourne got two of them. I watched the Roosters get one as well. You've got a sliding defence going this way, so all your body weight's on this foot as you're going. Then that guy flicks it back this way. If you've got somebody as quick as Pappenhausen coming in on the angle or anyone, who's meant to pick that guy up? Is it your fullback? Is he meant to be hanging back looking at that or not? No, well... You're meant to, it's about your spacing and, and your and your defensive line. You're meant to have them both covered. But he comes, if you look at Pebbenhausen, it's a bit of a fake because he comes from the outside and ends up on the inside. So the outside bloke thinks he's got him covered. And then as he catches the ball, he shifts behind the, the outside back row back to the inside. And he just, as he catches it, drops it back into that line and, and picks the exact line up that the back row is running. Um but it's it it happens before that, Marty, with what's happened with these rules, is because you can't get back on side, your spacing's wide anyway. So you can't adjust quick enough. And if you don't adjust quick enough and halves are that good, a nice flat pass and a little tip on. You saw the tip on from Rocco Berry yeah, on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, you saw the tip on um from young Luke when he gave it out to Montoya. It, they're so good now at just playing that space, it's gonna beat the I remember I remember growing up, you know, the old man used to say Mate, the ball will always beat the player. Every time. That's why That's why you throw a spiral pass. I tell you what, who is it? Hannibal on the A team who said, I love a plan coming together. I love it when I see a backline move like that coming off. It's just glorious because you know how much they practiced it in training. Two quick ones before we get on to the Warriors. Your, dra your Dragons? Oh, so what happened to your I Dragons, am, mate? I'm oh, oh sorry, Flano, God. the fitness and everything. The Dragons are looking good. <laughs> mate, you know, the, you know it's, it's like going to a party, Marty. You know, and it's built up to be the best party in the world. And you walk in there and they're playing ABBA. Um, it's just such well, a least the down. girls would be dancing if they're playing <laughs> ABBA, mate. So that's what the Dragons were like on the weekend. Look, I, I saw what happened in the when, – when it got away, I, I turned the tally off. I was so disappointed. Because Flano, over, the, over that last trial in the first round, he showed what could be achieved and then they fell back into their old – Dragons mentality. Um, he's got some work on his hands. I think. I think he'll pull him back out. But you know, at the at the Dolphins' home ground in front of their home crowd, thirty eight points. You know, that's a massive. That's yeah. a hiding. Yeah, that was. That's, you, you haven't just given the Dragons a, a little bit of a slap up. You've given them a real wake up call. Um, and that was just a, the most disappointing game of the round. Finally, just a quick word on the Eels. Did you see enough there against Penrith that that this the, so much expectation on this team that are they? a final side and can do some damage. I know it's only two games in. I, I'll tell you what I saw in that game. Uh, yes, the, the Eels are going to be there or thereabouts. They've got, they got you know some very good players across the board. But what I did see in that Eels game was that you, <laughs> there's going to be some, some points scored against Penrith. Tr the, the tries that Penrith led in against Parramatta, they haven't led in for three years. They haven't led... You know, they, there was one try there where they ran through... Uh, Cleary on the outside in the in the back row, who plays for Australia on the inside, his name just slips in my mind. There was a try from dummy half. We picked it up and just put it over the try line. Like that never happens. You know what I mean? And the speed is just catching people out at the at the moment. And whether or not we can adjust to it, or the referees allow us to adjust to it, because that's the other the other the other point is you can make all these changes, but every referee has a different interpretation. Of course, mate. You know, I would I actually thought on the weekend on Saturday night that the Warriors had the rubber the green in the second half. They got everything. Harry Grant, he was trying to do everything to, to get the referee involved in the game, and the referee basically had a Cameron Smith, you are not doing that to me, what Cameron Smith done, young Harry Grant, you're not him at the moment, and he just about lost Melbourne the game. Yep. He basically wiped it out. And I just think at the moment, referees are going to play a part in how these games are going to pan out later on in the year, but seeing Penrith let those easy tries in the way that they did... Man, if, you, if you're if you going, I've got a chance of winning the comp this year, well, I don't think you'd be as scared of Penrith as you were the last year. Oh, superb! Up the was. How good is that? 3.21 time. Uh, text messages, so many in for the Warriors. We'll get to them in just a second. In the cold, hard light of day on Monday, when you think about it now, did the Warriors blow that game? Because if the result had been reversed and Melbourne had a eight-point lead with three minutes to go and the Warriors won that game, I think most of us would sit there and they go, well, Melbourne choked that game. They're easy terms to throw around, aren't they? And, and you know, bottle job or choke job or something like that. Look, I thought that the Warriors in the first half conceded way too many points to just individual mistakes. But then scoring 20 unanswered, that's magnificent against that side. Then in a position to shut the door on them. Great sides win those games. 
And that's what, I mean, the Warriors aren't a great side yet. They're a good side. They've shut that gap, Tony, but in the top four, but not enough yet. And, and, and that's the point, isn't it? Like, you've got to be able to shut it right out. You know, like, going down to the last couple of seconds to lose a game and the way that they did is pretty devastating. But to get yourself in that position in the first place in the first half and come back and chase it down and lose it in the way that, it, it, that you'd lost it, it raises a number of questions doesn't it? So it raises a number of questions of why didn't we um, start the game like we finished it? Yes. How did we How did we put ourselves in that position we were chasing anyway? Because you've got you to say, Mel, you know, the same with Melbourne is that Bellamy will be saying, why'd you let yourself go when yeah, you're 18, 18 points in yeah, front? Right, yeah. You know, you should never have had to chase it. So there's a couple, couple of um, worrying trends for me with the Warriors. One is that they get into that position, they can't close it out. All right, you've got enough experience. No one's talked about it. it. Was Roger that made the error? All right, so you've got your most senior player there, daily in player. He's carried the football down. He's put the ball down. He's lost it cold, in a in a position three minutes out from full time. Where if he plays the ball, Johnson's burying them on the kicking game, and they the you know, Coots catches it down in his half because they they didn't want him in the, in his running. No, game. they didn't know. And they, they tackle him ten meters out, and they've got to work their way out. You know, you drop the ball, you're in a different position, and the rest is history. Um, so that's a real worrying trend. But the the big one is, I I think. Like, you have Wade Egan there, and, and at dummy half, he closes the game out. You know what I mean? He closes the game out. He goes to the right people. He he, he runs that ruck, and Sean Johnson, you know, just gets behind them with that kicking game, and they and they close it out. I thought I thought six minutes out, they were just playing to win the game. Know what I mean? So they were playing. They thought they had done enough. Eight minutes, we're just going to get get to the end of our tackles. There's two repeat sets they had to drop out. They kick it long. They've never kicked it. You tell me the last time you seen the Warriors yeah, kick a long drop yeah, out. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's you know actually I mean? always been short. So yeah, they've right. kicked it long. I've gone both times. So he's going to do a short drop out because nine times out of ten they get it back. But that showed me that they were just playing to win the game. And of course you got Xavier Coots there, the most oh, yeah. phenomenal finish we've ever seen in a football game. Um, but it was the lead up to that that got him. So, yeah, there's there's no, a bit of work still. Yeah, to do. You can you know we you can dissect the game into <laughs> to the end of the earth. In the end, they won it, and it's 0-2. And, and that's what is so brutal about this competition. As I say, it's, a, it's not a talking competition, it's a doing competition, and it's a winning competition. So you can only dwell for so long on that. The positives that you can glean out of it, because given the second half against Cronulla, and you look at that and think where the Warriors were so flat, couldn't score any points, compare that to the second half against Melbourne, minus those last three minutes. So there's all of that. They must be sitting there at Warriors HQ going, look, Okay, let's take this bit from that game, this bit from this game. We put that together, and my God, we're as good as any other team in the competition. I think that's real. Yeah, and and you you've got like I'd sort of look at it a little bit differently, Marty. You know, like you look at the edge of that Melbourne head, like they're two new edges basically that are struggling to defend, and I, I didn't um, sort of think that they, the Melbourne were going to hold on because I thought the Warriors were going to continually threaten their edge. Sean Johnson was just having a field day yeah, every time choosing attacked, the right pass. Score, you know? yeah. So why didn't you go more at the edges? The edges were struggling defensively. They looked like the Warriors of old, the way they, they were coming up and in and, and isolating the winger who didn't know what he was doing. Um, but two two losses in, in the context of what's happened, you'd want them now. You want, you want to iron those out now. And did you see enough to see that their improvement this week against Canberra. I think the fight and coming back and the way that they fought to get back in front by eight points is a, is a very good trait. You know, Andrew Webster, he'd be happy with that, that they actually dug in, listened to what he had well, messaged at halftime. why did it have to happen at halftime? Why couldn't it happen during the first half? Oh, that's, you know, that's the whole, that's what coaches are searching for in the NRL is to get a complete performance. You know, and when you're looking at the likes of Brisbane and Penrith, who have again set the tone for the week, you know, They've jumped back out of the gate the following week and just absolutely smashed them off the football field. The Warriors, to answer that question this week, they have to come out against a very good Canberra side who's got two in a row and they have to smash them off the field. See, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the Warriors haven't had an off day in either of those games. You could accuse the Roosters last night of having an off day. And I looked at Jared and I just thought, wow, you haven't played for six months, mate, because he just looked as though he just didn't have a breath in him, did he? No. But, but, you know, certainly, the, you know, the Warriors have had shockers and they had some last year as well, but they, they haven't had a shocker in either of these two games. Well, they did in the second just, half against, just against think, the Sharks. I but, just don't think they've put a the 80-minute the effort no, together. No, clearly not. So, you know, you've got to be really um, 
you sort of have to understand that when you're coming up against sides, especially sides like they have on the last couple of weeks that can score points, they're going to score points if you don't show up. You know what I mean? So Melbourne and Cronulla have got points in them. The same thing with Canberra, Penrith, Brisbane. And you don't want to be chasing games all the, all the time because the amount of times you chase them and lose them, you get you, you get used to losing. Right. Because you start to panic, you know. And, and this is what Andrew said in the first week. The coach, he said, I thought we'd done enough to win the game except we went off script. You know what I mean? We okay, started making right. yep. we started making um, un, unusual calls and 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 the and the game didn't flow like when but you who should does be. It come back to it again. The question, like, and those individual errors are being made in that first half. The on field leaders. It was like against the Sharks, where the on field leaders in that second half have to say, "Lads, what the hell are we doing here? We're doing this one off stuff again. We don't do that." Yeah. What, who are those guys, and why aren't they doing? Well, it? mate, it starts it starts at your nine. Because that bloke is the bloke with the hands on the ball in the most of the game. Like everyone goes at Sean Johnson. Well, if you break it down and look at a game of rugby league, the guy that touches the ball the most in the game is a dummy half. Like he's always he's always there in the middle. He's the first bloke with his hands on the ball and he's making decisions. You can win a game from dummy half. You know, Cameron Smith, you know, was the was the master of setting games up yeah. and just shutting yeah. them out. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. what I mean? So Hated him, I man. think that with the loss of Wade Egan, Wade Egan's out there, I don't think we lose a game. I just, I just think he knows how to close it out. But given the f- context of the first half, we shouldn't have gone at 18-6, you know? 18-6, probably the best thing for them coming out of the second half when, when Melbourne just... I well, thought they got the rub of the green. It's, e- I'll tell you, it's, easy, it's easy to also look at that thing with Roger at the end and go, OK, if Marcelo had have actually slid in low, because Jerome Hughes is the littlest guy on the field, and one-on-one, Marcelo should score that try. I screamed at the TV, thought it was a try. Perhaps on second glance, it maybe it was a bit Have you short. seen so many tries being stopped in the NRL over the last three years? Yeah. Guys um, underneath them. Unbelie- unbelievable yeah, it was huge the way defense, that guys wasn't are pulling... Pull Little guy on the park. Well, yeah. See, for me, I think that the, you're going you're gonna to continue to see more of that. If you get these t- um, these these interchanges, these ten inter- eight interchanges, you know what I mean? You should bring the interchanges down. Like, let blokes get tired so that the game starts to open up I agree a with more. you. Same as rugby, mate. You know, should an eight people on the bench, you can basically... Well, what the South Africans do, they actually substitute a whole bloody Ford pack. Remember that the sh- whole thing about 60 minutes is they're meant to be tired. Well, that's a stupid rule. Unlimited, unlimited interchange. Like, mate... Are you tired? Yes, I am. Get me off. Get, get, okay, me off. get back on. Yeah, simple <laughs> as that. Let's go to the break. After the break, he is a legend. Richard Agar is going to join us. Warriors assistant coach is going to be fantastic to pick his brains. 5050 on the text here, people. We'll go head to head. TK's top five in the Eflurix Clean Up Award, all to come in the last half an hour of the Rugby League Hour. Well, welcome back to the Rugby League Hour. Martin Devlin, Tony Kemp is sitting here. Uh, this particular segment is called. <laughs> He's a leech. Yeah, a little bit of a trumpet and a drum roll there for a man who's assistant coach of the Warriors, Richard Agar, and apparently your old man, Coach TK, Coach Tony, who's sitting with me, Richard. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, boys. Yeah, he did. Yeah, kept it tight in everything he knew, to be fair. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was a, a really... A really good and successful time for both them guys and, and a real enjoyable one, I'm sure. But, yeah, it's a, a small game and a small world rugby league. Richard, so you've had a couple of days to think about it, an absolutely gutting loss and everything. I mean, it's e- it's easy to yep. say, hey, look, you know, the boys choked that or they bottled that at the end. That last three minutes, though, from your eyes, what did you see? What went wrong in the last three minutes? Um, oh, it, it, it was well, chaotic and, and, and frantic. I, I think bottled it and choked. Uh, yeah, I can't say I, I particularly agree with those sentiments. To be to be quite honest, I think. We, we should not put ourselves in that situation, you know, a simple sort of play the ball error. And then we had seven and a half minutes without touching the ball via, uh, via I think, a variety of repeat sets and, and six agains and things like that. And uh, I think when we go back, even even the match winning try, I, I thought to scramble like we did, but then be under the pump on the edge, I thought we almost did everything we could to defend the play and it were a, you know, a spectacular finish. Yeah, it was, uh, and the was a big one. That, yeah, spectacular finish, and, and the try before, to be fair, were an extremely well-executed um, play from Melbourne. But I think, as as well as looking at the two or three minutes, we'll probably look at the first 20, mm. in which I, I think when we look through the course of the game, uh, 60, 65, maybe even 70 minutes, we played exceptionally well. I think when the things went wrong against us, and uh, they, w- they went wrong in a pretty spectacular fashion. You know, an offload try where they run 90 metres, uh, a kick try early doors on the first foray down our end where, you know, 
disappointed. You know, we knew those kicks were coming, and I felt we could have we could have perhaps handled that a little bit better. So there are a couple of couple of parts of the game that you know it's easy to look at the big play and the wash up, but you know we we definitely had opportunity in that game. Um, to have a little bit more distance between the scores. But having said that, you know, they're a good side. It's a, it's a tough place to go. Uh, and I think they came up with two remarkable plays to be. So overall, I thought we had, you know, for the bulk of the game, we had a pretty good performance. But as I say, the, the bits we got wrong, uh, we got wrong in a, in a pretty big way. Yeah, well said, mate. Well it, said. It's, it's just searching for that 80-minute effort, really, isn't it, Richie? Because you're yeah. right, you lose, you lose the first 20, they get a 90-metre try and a... And Warbrick goes up for the first, you know, catch from a kick and pulls yep. it off over the back of yep. Montoya and puts you under the pump at twelve nil. With with the rule yep. changes that have happened um, at the moment, how do you how do you counteract those type of momentum swings that can happen so fast this year? You know, like there's no lifting of the leg in the ruck, therefore the likes of Harry Grant yep. gets out really yep. quick. Yep. Um, you can't you can't put Pippen Alsum down because you can't lift his leg, so he, he shrugs and puts the ball over the. The, the back what what has it meant to you this year as far as um, the, the the coaching of your defensive line are the, are the boys struggling to get back and face uh, players with the speed of the rut uh, Kempi this could be a long winded answer and if I talk too long just interrupt me mate and tell me to, to shut no, up go so, ahead mate go ahead uh, people, first, people first of all we've, had, we've absolutely had, had to uh, you know you have to adapt your tackling technique and some of that we're still learning on the run and and I think the referees are. There's been some, you know, there's been some different interpretations yeah. around the leg lift. You know, we got a couple in our trial game um, that, that we, you know, we found out the hard way, I guess, about, about the leg lifts. Um, uh, I think well, it's been created for the safety of the game, but yeah, it, it can create quicker rooks. So these times were, I think, you know, it's at the weekend. I think, I think legs tackles can still be have an effective place in the game, Kempi, that you have a legs tackle and quite often it might be a one-man or, or, or a two-man tackle. I think one thing that's really important, and you're going to think this is extremely simple, is your ability to get off the floor quick. You know, if, if you get caught on, on, under a tackle or you have a legs tackle, your ability to actually beat the man with the ball up to get to marker and be an effective marker player can make uh, you, you know mm. can make a hell of a difference on the play, and it, and it's something so simple. It's an effort area, uh, and I, and I think the ability to try and regather and and smooth your line out and get your line in position when it's happening fast. So the examples I'll give you to that: the first twenty minutes we didn't. So Ari Grant went through the rook. Jerome Hughes got a couple of line breaks on us uh, through running at a defender's back. You know your ability to to keep tight around the rook and your A defenders, smooth your markers out and try and almost stop that momentum and win it back on the next play where where you might have to sacrifice a little bit of line speed is very important because, you know, the word that you use, momentum, if you flip the coin and you're talking about it on, on the other side where you've got attack, um, you know, front foot plays, ad line running, simple inside shoulder, stuff like that, all of a sudden, you know, you can march your team down the field with a couple of really effective plays. And even if you want to pull the trigger out wide, you don't really necessarily have to play the line anymore. You know, simple effective ball movement will, will get you 30 metres on down one sideline. Then you can go to the other sideline and get 30 metres. So um, I think what it what it produces is probably a, a, a faster flowing, more attacking game. But yeah, it's uh, it can certainly take some adapting on the run and, and look Kempi we went to a team um, who were a renowned for the defence and, and the rook defence and I guess the wrestle element of the game and, and I think if you look at the metres out of the week and you know we, we actually won the metres won the metres battle quite easily mm. uh, and, and run a lot of metres on Melbourne so yeah I think I think it's a challenge for every team um, you know another rule change what I think has added to momentum is the way that the police in the, the downtown rule uh, in terms of people being offside and, and making everybody get behind the kicker really because, look, that rule hasn't changed. It, it's just that the police in it yes, differently. Yes, facing of it, yeah. And, and, uh, and I think it were really noticeable. I, I thought from the vague games, um, you're finding a little bit more passing between the back five players on early plays. Uh, it, it certainly stops middle forwards getting in front of the kicker and getting downtown early. So it, it puts a different uh, level of uh, a, a the attritional element of the game into that. 
and it opens it up, you know, it opens it up for you for your quick men to, to get over the ad line with the find some passes, stuff like that. And, mm. and maybe there will be more meters in game because it, it takes away, you know, some teams can get players 15, 20 meters in front of the ball, put the ball as high as they can on a, on a Matt Burton style kick, if you like. Uh, and they're ready and waiting for the catches down there. So I, I actually don't mind that side of the new rule because I think, again, it will open it up for teams to, you know, to have a little bit more of a go out of backfield. Finally, just quickly, Richard, we thank you so much for your time, mate. Look, you know, it's yep. such a fast turnaround going into Friday and that. But as you said, look, there's yeah. enough in the first two games to suggest that the team is playing really well. It's just a matter of being able to play well for your full 80 minutes, which is what your coaches demand, obviously. But just in terms of the yep. confidence of the side, are the boys actually coming to training today and they're going, we're rough and ready to go on Friday already? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's part of our jobs at the moment is to not lose confidence because... It's early rounds. I think both games will acknowledge that, yeah, we could have won. We've, we've put ourselves in, in the position uh, and opportunities to win. I think from round one where, you know, we, we were very clunky and disjointed with the ball, I thought we looked a lot more sort of our style with the ball. And I thought we were really effective when we when we got down the other end this week. Uh, we made meters really easy. Um, as we've already said, there were some big moments in there that, that we didn't get right and that that hurt us really badly on the scoreboard. Uh, but performance-wise, I thought it was a step in the, you know, in the right direction. We just need to turn that 65 minutes into 80 and, and iron out some of those, you know, some of those, I guess, dumb penalties. And I don't like using that word, but sometimes fatigue can uh, cloud your judgment a little bit and, and effort, I, I guess, I, you know, I'll use Freddie Lussick's kick uh, kick pressure penalty magnificent effort but sometimes your effort can overspill into a little bit of lack of concentration and, and we just need to iron things like that out of our game and you know we've played two good teams uh, there's been glimpses in both that there's still a good 40 team in here and we really believe that and I think the boys have come in today after after I guess you know I'm sure you can imagine what the changes oh, were like nice. Uh, yeah. Melbourne just yeah. uh, just like um, to be in such a strong position with three minutes to go on and come in on, on the backside of that play well yeah yeah really really hard to take um, but it's important that objectively we look at it uh, acknowledge and, and, and improve on the stuff that, that's been letting us down at the moment but also realise that hey look if we can get this turn this 69 into 80 or we can half penalties and errors, particularly early in the game, what we saw, we, we're going to put ourselves in a strong position. But but as we know, look, one, it's early rounds, and two, there's just no easy games in the NRL. I, I can remember this stage last year, I think very early doors, we, we got a win, but I think I think we had three back, back losses at one stage, or, or four in five games, that was something it, yeah, like that. Yeah. But, but we never, you know, it didn't really affect how we felt about the team and what we needed to do to improve and as I say, I think that's our job is to, to really highlight the good stuff and, and get more of it and uh, make sure that the players keep uh, the confidence and belief, which at this moment in time, you know, you got to trust me on this, is, is not an issue. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us in those insights, mate. Awesome. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Good to chat to you. Great start. That is Richard Agar with us, ladies and gentlemen. Head to head. <laughs> This is where Devlin wins six love, six separate sporting topics, six separate issues here, Tony. I'm yeah, going to read I've you got, the I've issue. Gone and, I've gone and had a decent look in the mirror after last week's effort, Marty. I'm going to say I'm back. All right. Uh, you get to choose the pro or con for each of these arguments, starting with topic number one. Souths are the most disappointing team in the comp. They won't make the eight. I, I agree. Are you going to pro on that? I am. I think that uh, Latrell Mitchell, especially his rant on the sideline into a radio announcer's mic uh, and using a number of exple expletives, has got the guy sort of clutching at straws at the moment and not really realising that he's getting paid to perform on the football field and he can't. And I think he's going to affect the inside blokes there. It's Cody Walker. Um, for one, but also the other younger blokes that are coming through the side expecting better from him. So, man, I totally agree with you. I think Souths are done. Well, I'll, I'll argue the opposite of that because I bloody have to. On that, the 0-2 and, and the Warriors are 0-2 and, and the Knights are 0-2. And, 
And the dogs are Owen too. And out of those teams, I'd say maybe the doggies might be done, but the others I expect to come back, and I expect South to come back. They've got too much class on that side. Uh, yes, they played poorly, and I've been really disappointed in them as well. But when you look at their roster... And the fact that they missed out last year, I just can't see this as a team that goes back-to-back years without actually making that eight. And so I'm prepared to cut them a little bit more slack. However, if they go 0-3 or they're 0-4, I'll call them the Crusaders and they'll be bloody done and that'll be done. Does he get another five seconds? Mitchell doesn't finish the season. Nakora should have got a straight bloody red for that. Pro or, pro or uh, for or against? Yeah, I'll go against it. Okay, so I think that, uh, you know, it's a tough man's game. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to put your body into that position and, and guess it's touch and go on on a couple of seconds here or there, uh, you're going to get caught in some, some positions where, unfortunately, you're going to get hurt. And Nakora's just a big man on an edge playing a big man's game and putting his body where no one else wants to put it. He runs hard. You know that? He hits good lines of, of decent halfbacks, goes through lines, and he gets hammered. And it's all right for... for a bloke like him to hammer you back. I think that rugby league is dragging the chain and that they are a class lawsuit and a couple of smarty pants lawyers in Sydney away from the game being in serious trouble. I know that back in your day that these were tackles, but a shoulder to the head like that is horrific for everyone watching it. It was, uh, you know, Kikau, the big thing on his face. Mums are watching that going, I don't want my kid putting putting himself through that. Plus also, just in terms of... Using the mum card. In terms of the tackling, you don't need to do it, mate. Use your bloody arms. That's why you've got arms, OK? It's not it's not a shoulder-to-head game anymore. I think it was Drongo. I think it was, it was boorish. And I think that unless the game stomps it out... As I said, I'm really worried about a couple of lawyers taking over. That's about seven seconds, seven seconds over there, seconds. Mate. Come, Come on. on. <laughs> Pro or anti this one? Ricky Stewart is one of only seven coaches to coach 250 wins. That makes him one of the greatest coaches of all time. Or against? I don't think he's one of the greatest coaches of all time. Yes, he's won a grand final. Um, he's coached Australia and... You know, he's been around for a hell of a long time, but would you put him in the greatest coaches of all time? You'd have to say that Wayne Bennett would be one of those. Tim Sheens would have to be another. Malcolm Riley came over here in the 10th year of Newcastle, took him to a grand final, would be an, another one. Graham Lowe, they, they said in 85 he couldn't beat the Australians. He 18 0 and pants them, um, along with Blue McLennan and Stephen Kearney when they won the 2008 World Cup. Where does Ricky Stewart fit in that bunch? In terms of the NRL, 250 games, that means that he is one of a glorious seven. So I would actually put, you've got Bellamy, Sheens, Bennett, Ivan Cleary, Bozo, Jack Gibson, the guys from the 60s. Jeez, and I didn't even name Bellamy or Cleary. Okay, the guys that are from the 60s, I don't know. There was a guy called Holloway or who won six or seven titles. Or Jack it? Gibson, I didn't even mention him. Yeah, so in terms of the stats, Sticky Ricky, and he's done it with this, with sides, especially this Canberra side, which aren't actually a great side, and he keeps getting them to the top eight. So I don't know if he's a legendary coach, but I think it's a hell of an achievement for him. The Warriors choked that, for or against? Yes, they did. I think they. I, I think you can say, call it choking. I think with uh, six minutes to go, they sat back and thought that they're going to win the game because they had eight point. Uh, uh, eight point lead against the Melbourne side that was struggling. Harry Grant especially couldn't get a uh, rubber the green from the referee. And I thought the two long dropout kicks were an indication that we just have to get to that end of that set of six defensively and we'll win the game. They didn't account for a couple of big errors to come into it. And once that happened, old, old Jerome Hughes got his ball game back on. Look, I don't like using the words bottling and choking because I actually think it's way too easy on this side of the microphone to do it. So I'll defend the Warriors. I think that they lost it before that last three minutes and they lost it in the first half by conceding 18 points and, and 12 of those points at least were points that shouldn't have been conceded. Also, it's easy to micro-analyse certain moments and Montoya's should have been a try uh, gets forgotten at the end of the first half. If they go in only six points behind, that's a different second half performance. Look, they showed enough for me in the comeback of 20 points, but it was just goddamn disappointing. But I tell you what, you're choking now because you're f- five zip. Oh, I think it is actually. I'm li- <laughs> Manly are legit. <laughs> they are 100%. Any team on the weekend that you watched, you're looking at a Manly side run by Daly Cherry Evans with the likes of Luke Brooks on that left hand edge getting the wheels in motion across the board. The Trubrovich brothers, one in the middle, one at the back, one on the left edge, all look great. I think the last time they had that type of, uh, of tri- tri- triple threat was when the Walters boys played for Brisbane and look how many grand finals they won. So I like the look of uh, Manly. I think they've got size, strength and speed. 
I'll argue against that because only two games have been played. And when you look at the teams, Raiders, Cowboys, Sharks, Eagles and Storm that have won two out of their two games, how many of those teams right now are you going to put in your top four? The Seagulls. You would put the Storm in there for sure, right? The rest of them still have a lot to prove. And that Manly side didn't make the eight last year. Let's look at them again after six games. Let's look at them after ten games. They've won two very impressive games. And yesterday, I thought the Roosters were poor and that Manly did a number on them. So I'll just reserve judgment on that. I think that they are impressive, but I'll reserve judgment as to whether they are legit in top four. One to go then, and that is... Was that the greatest rugby league try ever, Xavier Coates? It was. As I've seen plenty of good tries. Martin Afire, I've seen him score 10 at Wembley. Uh, Kevin Edel, I've seen him score and get us back into the World Cup in 1995 in a corner when four blokes were lying on his back. But that try from six metres out with a clock and everything up against them. And Dallin did everything. We saw Air Coates at work up against Air Dallin. And he did everything to try and stop him and couldn't stop the big man from getting that ball down. Before, if you looked at his left hand, was millimetres from hitting the ground and not being called. Greatest ever. I'd say that it was the greatest finish ever. I'm not going to call it the greatest try ever. I go back to Ray Warren. It's a miracle in that origin try by Gary Coyne. Was Mark it? Coyne. Mark Coyne. Down the other right land. Yeah. Look, you know, there are brilliant tries which involve a hell of a lot of teamwork and a hell of a lot of passing. That was a really simple, just right across the field. What was impressive was his finish. That's what was most impressive about that. You know, the, the stats, six and a half metres out, 2.3 metres in the air, a split second between getting his right. So I think that the finish was glorious, but I don't know whether the try odd rate is one of the greatest ever tries. It's been played all around the world as we speak. Lewis Cleanup Award. <laughs> A couple of segments to go. There's this one, and then TK, you will do your top five and rate your top five teams. And I'm very fascinated to know are they like the top five we're looking at at the table now. But the Effluex Cleanup Award, and this is somebody who takes the gunk and turns it into the gold. Yeah, and it has to it has to go to one Xavier Coots, who for Melbourne took what looked like a loss and turned it into an absolute win for the Melbourne Storm up against the Warriors in the last three seconds of a game. I'm watching the game, sitting on the couch, um, Marty, on Saturday night, thinking it's their home. Like, even when they made that break and they sped, um, spread that ball out to the left edge and it falls into the hands of Xavier Coates, already, he's got too far to go, he's not going to get there. But when he left the ground, I thought that was it. I thought, no way in the world anyone can jump that, not, like, jump that high, but go that length. Because he's six metres out. And I don't know whether or not he got turbos in the bottom of his boots, but to get <laughs> that far, like that's six metres, I couldn't, I couldn't jump two metres at the moment, but to jump six metres at that speed and get that ball down, I read a comment today from Craig Bellamy saying he practices that every every oh, day of the week. That is outrageous. If he practices that, that is absolutely outrageous. And mate. that clean the Warriors up. He gets their fluix uh, clean up of the week. And they've got an overlap here. TK's top five. All right, here we go then. And in at number... Number five. Well, number five, I'm actually going to give it to the Sea, sea Eagles. I'm going to put them in there because I didn't want to put them at the top because I think there's a couple of other teams that have really put um, the rest of the competition on notice. But I'm going to give it to the Sea Eagles. I think they showed enough over the first two rounds to say, actually, with Luke Brooks in the side, if we can keep it as steady as possible, the ship, we're only going to get better as the weeks go on. Number four. It's the Storm. The Storm. You don't got... rate them one? You're... They've just beaten Penrith and the Warriors, no, mate. No, not at all. Because still got, they still haven't got their best team out. I, I, I'll leave them in the... I still think they're struggling to make the top four with the side that they got. Oh, they need God. months to back. They're just struggling to make that 2-0 and at the moment. They need months Man, to back. Man, they're 2-0 and, and you're calling them premiership winners. No, they're, they're not even in the top three as far as I'm concerned at the moment. They got out of jail on the weekend and uh, if it wasn't for a bit of magic, they would find themselves sitting down the bottom of that table. But you know what the most important bit of that statement is? They got out of jail. Yeah. That's what good teams do, they right? Don't, they don't... It was against the Warriors. Okay, they got out of jail. Three... I'm going to go here with the Sharks. I think the Sharks are two and zip, and they're more Listen confident. Listen to the tone in his voice, though. You're more, such a doubter about that more, team. And it's been a more confident two zip from the Sharks under, I, I guess, a little bit of pressure this year to make sure that they don't finish, uh, start the season like they finished it in the last couple of years. So I like the I like the look of their side. I think they're the ones that are really showing, along with Manly, a bit of guts in the, in the way that they're preparing. Um, preparing for games and taking the game two side. So the Sharks, for me, they sit in my top three, and I think they sit there quite comfortably at the Do moment. Do you think that they're overperforming at the moment? Well, 
you would say that too after the way they performed being knocked out of the top four in the last couple of years. Number two. Now, last year, last week you had the Warriors at one, remember? Yeah. Well, this year I'm going to go Penrith number two. Penrith at two? Yeah. I'm not going to put them at number one because I've seen enough holes in the Penrith defensive line. If I was a coach and the defensive coach to be worried, I thought that uh, Justin Morgan must have moved over to Penrith, the coach. Um, they, were, <laughs> they were leaking like a sieve. Uh, <laughs> but, Morgs. But uh, look, I think that Penrith, they can still score plenty of points across the line um, to get them back there in that final. But the team that they're going to have to beat is my number one pick. Number one. And that's the Broncos. You know, I think they're I think they're under pressure this weekend with no Reynolds. I doubt whether Reynolds will play at halfback. So it's a little bit of a, a letdown given that it's a, a grand final rematch. But I still think it's going to be one hell of a game. But if they can keep Reynolds on the pitch this year, Brisbane Broncos are the team to beat. 5-2, we've got a couple of minutes left. Zane is on the line, the warrior holic. He wants to have a quick word before we go to our musical interlude. Hey, Zane, welcome back, bro. Oh, mate, most uh, stressful game I've watched in a very long time. But when I went back and watched it again yesterday, I thought we went bloody well. Mm. Very competitive, but a few small errors really cost us. Yeah, what what do you make of the speed of the game this year, Zane, compared to the start of the season last year? Yeah, I, I, that's the thing that stuck in my mind in the first 20 minutes, that they were killing us with the speed around the ruck. And I think it was a combination between Lusick and Todd, who got caught flat-footed a couple of times there. Um, I think we're really going to have to improve on that. And, you know, just the speed across the park of having Hughes, Beanie and that. We don't have that blind speed apart from Metcalf and maybe DWZ in our team. So that's a concern for me. Are you worried at all at 0-2? No, because of the way we lost. I mean, I, I look at, we probably played better than 95% of the teams over the first two weeks. We were controlled, silly errors. We had 14 errors last year on average a game and still got to top four so. But my preface is we have to, to beat the Raiders well this weekend. We lose three in a row, dark times. Hey, Zane, do you think that Lussex the answer at number nine? I think long term. Look, we, I remember you and I having conversations about Wade Egan three or four years ago thinking he was never going to take us to the finals. The reality is like, hookers sometimes take time, and I think he's got a lot of fundamentals. But I'm also really excited to see um, Etuate Fukofuka come through, ex-rugby union halfback, an amazing pass. Reminds me of Pity Wifu. Okay. The man just set up the try. That was the Rugby League Hour. Brought to you by Microbio Solutions Limited. Solving environmental issues using green technologies. Visit microbio.co.nz. It started with a Mitchell try.